Good, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our another special session with uh, um, Neil Bell. He's the founder of uh, Nijin Capital. Uh, Nijin Capital has been like one of the top, one of the I wouldn't say one of the. It's the top performing uh, uh, fund in its category in India over the past one year, and uh, so he he specializes in um, special situations opportunities investing. and uh, also uh, he also he is also uh, very much into uh, tech driven opportunities as well so uh, neil thanks a lot for accepting our invite it's a privilege for us to host you uh, actually our di club of sessions are a bit different from the usual sessions that uh, we see on internet here like all the monitors will be like uh, try, will try to dive deeper into your thought process and how how uh you are able to like get uh, such such good returns in your portfolio and uh, uh, we are very excited for it no thank you for inviting me i am happy to be here always uh, nice to you know come and chat with like minded people right right so uh, like first first let's like start with your journey uh, where, how did you started in investing and how it has been and uh, t- till 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 this point uh so you know my journey has been just like anybody else's journey uh, the only i guess little difference would have been that i started very very early and i think that played a key part in the evolution so you know whoever starts in market you have to go through this tuition period where you have to re- make a lot of mistakes so luckily for me i did those mistakes uh, at an early age and i came to some clear conclusions uh, i started at the age of 15 by the way and i Uh, came to a lot of clear conclusions quite early on i knew that investing works i realized this i invested in a couple of ipos and uh, those ipos be- became super hit i think well, it was one was petronet another one was yes bank and instantly you just knew that you don't have to do much just identify good businesses invest and even if the markets fell all you have to do is do sip and you need to have courage and that you know you just no need to worry all the time what will the market do what will the market do just remain invested and things will come into place and uh, over the years of course uh, you know one starts exploring newer things so the basic foundation was there early on and uh, i learned about special situations uh, i did a lot of work on it uh, i realized i went deeper into this what special situations mean and you know for example I, i so much so that i went and saw what warren buffett was doing and i realized that while he talks a lot about value investing his kind of value investing is not the plain vanilla value investing he says it in a very simple way that buy something for buy some asset which is below its intrinsic value it's a very generic way of putting things but in his portfolio when we went and saw what he was holding when he was doing uh, fund management for others he was only doing corporate restructurings he was almost i would say entirely 100% invested in special situations which he at that time termed as normal value investing the term special situations was i think uh, more uh, you know bought into the limelight by joel greenblatt but so at an early age i realized that you know value investing karna hai you want to buy something which is having good growth prospects but pay attention to valuation so this started me on a different trajectory and different journey and uh, paid rich dividends over the years and of course uh, recently got the idea that yes you need to focus on the internet and uh, focus on technology related theme, uh, theme. so in my journey i realized these things uh, that do investing not worry about what other people are saying just focus on what you are doing and then develop your skill sets along the way and eventually once you come across what suits you just do it doesn't matter what other people say so i'll give you the timeline as to how it worked out started at the age of 15 when i was in the 10th grade uh i think i was in sp gen it's a it's a institute in mumbai and uh, i was restless that time i was i think i was about 20 or 21 and at the age of 
I decided that uh, enough is enough and I must start my company. So I started with this Nijen Capital when I was 21 years old. Uh, that time, so uh, yeah, of course, I dropped out of college. I think uh, that's an important dis disclaimer also. So I quit college midway and I started the company. At that time, I did not have enough capital to do much. So the only idea was to become a sub broker. So I became a sub broker with Angel Broking at that time. And uh, I built a community. Social media platform that time was uh, Orkut. So I built a community there. I helped people with you know informal advice as to what they can do, what they cannot do. And uh, soon enough, uh, we be I became financially independent. And uh, after many years of learning what I just explained uh, and developing my skill sets, uh, we just recently decided that yes, now we can take the official PMS license and do this professionally. And no looking back since then. Last year, in fact, we uh, also started with our startup investing platform. So we are the only one place where you know you can do PMS. At the same time, you want to explore startups, you can explore startups also with us. So yeah, this is how we are shaping up right now. This has been my journey. Sounds good. Sounds me, good. So uh, I guess we 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 get some sort of echo. Uh, all right. So any any moderators who wants to ask any follow up question? Uh, yeah, Utkash. Uh, Neil, I, I found it very interesting that you mentioned that uh, you know you dropped out of college uh, and then decided to go ahead and pursue this. Uh, but I, of what I remember, I think I think we have each other on LinkedIn, and your profile says that uh, you know you went ahead and did a did an MBA in 2007 so i I, just, uh, I think this is a part of your story that not many people know about so how did you go from dropping out of college to doing an mba to then you know uh, starting uh, uh, negan yeah yeah so that is that is the one i dropped out of my it was not an mba it was an fmb i dropped out of that very particular course i didn't complete it oh so you had done your bachelor's first at HR. yeah yeah, yeah. Course. yeah yeah that and, i had done and then, then you dropped out. Yeah. yeah yeah this is the higher education uh no because i was asking uh i think sebi requires you to have a graduation to do to get your uh <laughs> yeah. license i'm in the middle of doing that right now <laughs> <laughs> okay okay and and neil uh like how how has have you seen so since you were like one of the early adopters of special situation opportunities right so how have you seen the evolution of uh, this this particular strategy in india over the years um i i'm seeing like a lot of people now uh it's the, the awareness is like much high as compared to compared to you may say uh five years or ten years ten years back so and and since like a lot of people start getting active uh into a particular strategy the alpha get, goes down so how do you see the evolution of this? Uh, so, you know, uh, special situations have just become popular now uh, in, in the sense that, yes, people are understanding what it is. Uh, but it's been happening since a long time in India. Like, you know, the, I, I think the first one which I remember happening in India, which at least on which I paid attention was the Reliance uh, demerger. Uh, when Mukesh Ambani and Anil Ambani got a piece of the uh, different businesses, and that created immense value when that happened. A lot of the Anil Ambani businesses went up after that. So it's it's been happening. Not many people knew that this is called special situation. People thought, okay, yeah, this is value unlocking activities. It, now we just termed it. So most of the investors already already know all these things. The only thing, see, it doesn't matter if normal investors like retail investors or HNI investors know about this or not. What matters is, can institutions do it? And largely, by and large, institutions avoid special situations uh, because for them, it's a lot of hassle on the compliance side. Like, for example, a, a large cap mutual fund, if just when it knows that a, a large cap company is going to be split into two mid caps or two small caps, it 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 knows that not to get involved in it because then it'll have to sell the the units after they get demerged, for example. So they typically avoid getting into this. So that leaves a good hole 
for people like us to you know do what we do so i don't see that even if it you know social media may it became got some appreciation now so i don't see it causing any trouble there are special situations happening every day i mean even i feel difficult to keep track of everything so a special situation opportunity didn't turn out like you expected right matlab a lot of time it might happen that uh, you had planned it in a certain way but that, but things didn't turn out that way no i, I think uh, it happens many times is not a given that some in a company doing special situation that means the stock must go up definitely not uh, so many times we have to kind of figure out as to which ones are firstly serious to do it go through with it and which ones are just doing it for you know getting attention so many a times a company may announce a demerger but then not follow up with it uh, or it just gets delayed indefinitely so in that cases in those cases investors end up making loss so in my experience i did one special situation in 2018 i think it was a cesc demerger where we would have made a lot of money but in the <coughs> middle of the merger there was a regulatory issue the calcutta electricity board did not allow for the full demerger to go through so it was a half as a demerger so in the in, in, like you know we didn't make any money we got out of it in a break even uh situation in a bear market that to 2018 the stocks were falling quite a bit so we didn't make money but uh, also we didn't lose money but we wasted a lot of time uh, we wasted almost one year one year plus in it and didn't make any money so many a times this is the risk the risk is that it will get delayed or the risk is that the promoter may just cancel it you know that is a big risk more than the value unlocking risk and coming to that right you talked about opportunity cost of uh, like holding on to a, a position so how do you uh, like uh, uh, do the portfolio allocation part of it right how much do you, you try to allocate uh, to uh, any particular position and if there are any certain metrics that you follow uh, for for it so uh, what i see since we are managing public money we can't anyways be very very aggressive in doing things we have to find a middle ground and focus on also not losing money so when we do things we like to have a broad portfolio so right now in our portfolio we have 30 businesses so one of the things that i do is i spread my spread my uh, you know investments don't need to just participate in three or four so i'd like to have 10 or 15 on the special situation side at all time so these are the few things i focus on uh, in terms of uh, you know watching my risk right right so, right, right. so, al- so al- uh, allocation is like you you talked about so but, but how do you like allocate percentage allocation to a particular special situation opportunity suppose you have taken a, a position and the date suppose is coming coming nearby so do you increase the allocation then or or maybe after the demerger has happened how how does that work so what happens is that special situation is like a game of flush i mean teen patti you know we all play it there are lots of variations to it it is not a simple three card flush whoever wins the best card there are many 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 variations and different ways of doing it so we have to first develop an expertise doing it for many years you do you get a sense uh, that how much exposure to take at which stage so for example when it is just announced i don't like to take a big position because there is a good chance it can get delayed it can get cancelled uh and at the end of the day you have to figure out whether to buy before or after because many a times the most money that i have made i have made after the special situation is done so for example first of all some of the other people who do special situation they don't even consider the whole concept of special situation is misunderstood in india people think ki demerger ke x date tak it's a special situation and after the demerger is done it becomes a normal situation actually is far from it the special situation continues even in, on the spin off as it is listing on its own so be, why because many a times after the spin off as i said these big institutions have compliance issues 
So many a times I have seen that these big mutual funds keep selling, keep selling. So it did sometimes take six months, eight months, eight odd months to finish selling. And the price remains depressed and keeps coming down. So before we kind of figure out what kind of allocation we need to do, we need to figure out can this particular company which we are targeting in the special situation out of the two or three division, we may be targeting one division. Will this thing see selling after the special situation? Or will it see buying after the special situation? So many a times, I knew that this particular company is going to see selling. So I'll tell you an example. There was a, a company called Arti Industries, which had a demerger of a very small, tiny unit called Arti Surfactants. And I read a couple of uh, brokerage reports. I'll not name the broker, but in the brokerage report, it was written that, you know, the pharma division is good, the chemical division is good. And then they are written about RT surfactants. They actually use these words. This is just gravy. So they called it gravy. So I knew that a lot of these institutions are getting advised by these, you know, brokers who don't understand clearly what they are saying. That, you know, this is just gravy and sell it. So I knew that RT surfactants is going to see selling after the demerger gets over. Whoever on the FII side or the mutual fund side bought RT Industries, bought RT Industries for RT Industries. Not one single person bought RT Industries to get exposure to RT surfactants. So I knew the selling was going to come. So we didn't buy before demerger. We waited for it to list. So it listed, I don't now, sorry, I don't remember the exact price. I, th I think it listed around 450 rupees. And the selling started, furious selling started. And it fell to 222 uh, in one side. And on the day of 222, suddenly volume started appearing on lower circuit. And we were watching it like a hawk. And we thought, okay, now this is going to open here. We are getting an extraordinary price already. Let's not be greedy. So we bought in the lower circuit ourselves at 222, which ended up opening the lower circuit. And uh, the price quickly jumped in a month's time from 222 to 509 we exited at 509 thinking that we did a great job that we more than doubled our money in a single month within three more months or so or maybe four or five months or so the price was 1800 so it became a nine bagger in practically six or eight months something like that so Special situations have many, many different ways of like, for example, if you waited like this for the tips industry special situation, tips ended up becoming a 10 bagger before the special situation even is, you know, nearing half pay mark. I mean, it's, it's still going to take some time. But in tips, I was very clear that there is no need to wait because after the special situation, there is going to be no selling. There's going to be buying. So why not just buy it right now? Because you're getting it at a very cheap price. So as I said, you know, there's no right or wrong, but the, there is a lot of instincts involved over here. I mean, that comes from only from experience. So, uh, so uh, I, 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 um, um, I have a follow-up question on, on uh, this Arthi as uh, I can uh, touched upon. So was it, you know, reading the tape or uh, something you uh, checked on fundamentalism? Because, you know, I can totally relate what you did there. I mean, it looks more like a technical trading kind of, kind of stuff, right? No, no. So we knew at what price range we wanted to buy at. We thought that we can even make money buying at, let's say, 400 rupees. But when at 400 rupees, it's such a big, large, lower circuit. Why will I go and, you know, help someone out? So I waited, waited, waited. And incidentally, from 400 and 60 fell to 400, it fell to 222. And at 222, I started seeing volume at lower circuit. And I knew that if it opened, it will go to the upper circuit. Mein so I thought, okay, forget it. Now, whatever happens doesn't matter. It's in my zone where I was happy to buy. So I just took a chance and I bought it. So yeah, there is looking at the tape also. Of course, you have to look at the tape. But ideally, we did a lot of work on it. And we knew that at this price, it's a no-brainer valuation-wise. Uh, so Neil, I, I think... Uh, uh, you know, 
we we've, we've heard a lot uh, from you about spe- special situations but recently um, uh, uh, you started to pay a lot of attention at least uh, you know in in the communication that you've been putting out about uh, mega trends and um, and some of those uh, mega trends that you've uh, spoken about uh, are mainly you know music streaming and qsr so i just wanted to know uh, what got you interested all of a sudden because you know it's almost like uh, from nowhere uh, music streaming became a hot topic on social media and now qsr is becoming that way so what got you interested and how do you see these sectors moving forward so i think uh, so as i said you know i got interested on the internet side and i started doing a lot of work not only in india but i started seeing trends in china i started seeing what is happening in america on the technology side internet side so i started talking a lot about technology to everyone unfortunately i got misunderstood uh, that when i meant technology i meant only the new age technology companies um if you open our portfolio and see almost entirely our tech basket is comprising of traditional businesses which are using technology in a massive way to transform themselves and qsr and music are at the forefront of this in our portfolio we are very very strong on qsr we are very very strong and bullish on music so if you see the music to i have explained and many people know what has happened uh, on the qsr front this is very interesting like if you see the normal restaurant business it is probably the worst business in the world restaurant business it you know at least it was until 2018 whereby it was just requiring too much capex too much hassle to run a business and too much uncertainty of a single location and stuff like that you know customer only it you know one restaurant can only serve a certain locality so i was never interested i thought ki this is like very bad that time there was specialty chemical uh, specialty restaurant listed and i was like no chance forget it but suddenly i started paying attention to what is going on in america on the side of doordash and other things what they are doing and i realized that while doordash was not profitable this qsr chains benefited from doordash and the connectivity and the change of customer preferences and i thought if this happens in india you know we are going to follow the same thing that is happening in america there are a lot of these big qsr chains have become very big now and created a lot of value for uh, investors so we started tracking but we knew that the unit economics are not in favor suddenly in this especially in this pandemic period indians for the first time started embracing technology whether it is my mother and father or anybody else who are aged or even our side like even i never use upi uh, until before the pandemic i used to always rely on my wife to do the upi transaction i used to find it very complex but during the pandemic it was something which was forced upon us ki download that goddamn you know google pay on your phone and do something with it so it and then we came to the conclusion this is like super super simple and super easy and uh, so we were forced to use technology for the first time as indians and we got hooked on to it then came the concept of you know everyone's at home so let's start ordering food so swiggy and zomato as a business really took off in india and because of that the customer has now completely changed like you want to call over friends you want to watch some tv uh, you know it's late night what do you do order a coffee just it's a reflex now go to zomato go to uh, swiggy it's a reflex order a coffee order a pizza burger whatever you feel like so what this has done this has made the qsr space which is the quick service restaurant space a quasi technology company quasi technology space there's a lot of tech getting involved so earlier these car, like you know a kfc outlet used to be a 3000 square feet outlet because they only relied they were relying on the customer to come and dine in the restaurant today 50% of revenue suddenly has come from cloud kitchens so 
any further capex that the deviani international does or what uh, sapphire foods does is a 1200 1300 1400 square foot new outlet so the they are suddenly their cost in terms of rent has fallen by 50 percent manpower fallen by 50 percent the furniture fixtures maintenance all those things fallen by 50 percent what that has done what the unit, the store level ROIC used to be 30%, 25-30%, it jumped to 60-65%. So the ROIC has gone up significantly because of the adoption of internet and the adoption of technology in this business. And what these guys have now realized that they don't need, that even with a 1200-1300 square foot outlet, uh, outlet, their revenues are not suffering. Their revenues are still up because cloud kitchens have become a huge part of their revenue stream. And now you're seeing that in the numbers of Sapphire. Sapphire reported earnings today. In a rising inflationary environment, it's reported a huge jump in EBITDA margin. How has that happened? It's happened because of, thanks to Swiggy and Zomato, these guys are getting benefited in a big way. So I was one of the first guys to call QSR uh, a technology, you know, I, I, I'm actually quoted that QSR is a tech, uh, tech play. And people used to laugh, you know, you're calling a restaurant a technology business. But it is. It is actually is. And you're seeing the numbers. And see, it was always a great opportunity on the revenue front. We knew that McDonald's will sell more burgers every, every year. There was no doubt on that. The doubt was on the unit economics. How much capex, how much royalty they pay, can they make an enough return for themselves in terms of return on capital and stuff like that. But now that is changing. So... While the revenue is set, 25% revenue growth will happen for the next probably 10 years. But now it's going to happen with higher EBITDA margin thanks to technology. So this is what I mean by mega trends. That there are about seven, eight sectors in the economy today where there's going to be no volatility. I'm sorry. They are going to grow and they are going to grow and they are going to grow and they are available at decent valuations and they are going to re-rate. So there's no need to be doing coffee can kind of investing anymore. You need to be getting into things that can re-rate. Coffee can may a problem is that a re-rate candidate is not a de-rate candidate. Hai. You buy a stock at 100 p, you're only setting yourself for getting it at a 90 p or a 80 p. It's not going to re-rate higher. Here, you're going to get high growth with a good chance of re-rating. So that's why we focus on, we, we, we've called them technology, we've called them mega trends, you can call them whatever you want. But these kind of sectors are going to do good. So we spoke, so we spoke a little about, uh, about uh, QSR and uh, and music streaming. Uh, can, can you uh, can you mention what what some of the other sectors look like? Because you said there would be seven with uh, low to no volatility. So there are many. Uh, so one area that we like a lot is the electric vehicle space. It's again, it's a no-brainer, right? Everyone who's involved in this area knows that over, like, auto industry is a cyclical uh, industry, but the electric vehicle space over there is going to keep increasing its share of the pie. So we don't want to get involved with the electric vehicle manufacturers. We want to get involved with the IT players who are supporting them. So you know, I think in two thousand. Late 2018, there was a demerger. It was one of the best demergers of the time. KPIT was demerged and the other company became Birla Soft. We loved both of it, but I loved KPIT even more. But for one and a half years, KPIT was struggling between 60 and 80 rupees. And in the 2020 crash, it fell to 35 rupees. And I was like, I couldn't believe what is happening. So, at that point of time, I knew that electric vehicle is going to become a major force. And I don't want to, because there was no clarity ki which electric vehicle player will survive or do well. But I knew that these guys who are servicing a lot of the electric vehicle players, they'll eventually do very good. So we picked up KPIT in the demerger. It was practically at a single digit PE at that time. And we just thought, ki, we have not made money for one and a half years, but we were very happy holding it. And it came good. And I think even now, Right now, I think it's a little bit overvalued. We sold KPIT already. But uh, if KPIT, LTTS, Tata LXC, these kind of companies came down, we would love to kind of re-enter them. 
So electric vehicles is a one big space which I think is a mega trend. Uh, music is another. Uh, QSR is another. Then you know, there's a SaaS. In SaaS, I feel there's a big opportunity. A um, lot of these companies, especially on the unlisted side, uh, on the startup domain, uh, are doing good work. There are some micro cap SaaS companies which we are tracking, and uh, uh, you know, we may buy. Of course, which I can't name because they are too small. um so there are many such industries where i think revenue side with you're going to see no volatility and uh, investors if they get a good entry point will end up doing good and if we mix saas with uh, special i mean if we mix mega trends with special situation the portfolio will do good in all kinds of times fascinating fascinating uh, I also Absolutely. wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, you know um, because you you talk a lot about SaaS and just the last time that we had you on on Twitter Spaces, um, I was able to ask you a little bit about uh, you know international investing as well. So I just wanted to again uh, for for a lot of the audience that might not have been there, uh, how do you view the SaaS opportunity? Uh, you know. uh in india and abroad and how would you split that uh, uh as an investor uh between india and and uh, international investing in india uh, in the listed space it's not too compelling in terms of opportunities it, it they are good ideas like rate gain is is part of our portfolio we like it intellect design is another one which we like uh but the real opportunities in the startup domain so we are exploring opportunities there uh and the real big opportunity right now it's i think a generational opportunity is happening in us where a lot of these companies have fallen quite a bit like for example freshworks now is trading at 19 dollars today down 12% i before i just checked the charts before coming here so it is down to 19 dollars i think these kind of companies are the good ones where you don't get this kind of quality in india so if you make a basket of saas companies in america in the us market i don't think for the next 4 5 6 years anyone can lose money awesome sachi awesome. you had a question yeah yeah thanks krishna so neil bhai one question that i had so uh, i the i think you talked about the qsr space and how they are leveraging technology Now, if we look at uh, within those companies, uh, be it Deviani or Burger King or even uh, Sephora or even Domino's, then uh, amongst uh, all these players, Deviani and Sephora are more dependent, so to speak, right now on say Zomato's and the Swiggies of the world because their own app has limited contribution. Whereas uh, likes of Dom- uh, Domino's, if you look at their uh, app or the way they operate their business, is much more tech driven. but i think you still went with deviani and safai so was it valuation or you know maybe uh, something else that we are missing when it comes to tech play within qsr so again why not dominos why safai uh, or deviani yeah so valuation was a key differential now as of right now deviani has nearly doubled uh, it was at 110 or 15 and now it's like like 180 so it's become a bit on the expensive side but sapphire on the other hand is still at a significant discount to deviani and today's earnings will mark a change in winds for uh, sapphire's valuations in vis-a-vis deviani i think now it deserves to trade at the similar kind of valuation if they've proven that they can also start printing similar margins they're not yet there but looks like they will get there uh, the momentum is there so it was definitely a call on valuation so right now also we have sapphire as our number one position followed by deviani okay. and one and question one that question i had, that I had. sorry there is some uh, yeah so when, when you talked about special situation so you know do you have say any uh, framework in mind uh when you evaluate that okay this is an investable special situation say say two or three key points before you uh, you know uh, just to filter out because as you rightly mentioned and uh, if you have the right lens then there is always a uh, some sort of a special situation playing at a, a given period of time so uh, some initial frameworks or thumb rules that you can help us uh, to at least 
add in, filter that, and if there are some uh, further double clicks that you do, and then that would be uh, very useful. Yeah, so you know, I, I like to do structural plays more than cyclical plays. First is that. So even on the special situation side, I avoid cyclicals. So while I agree that I did the Vedanta delisting because I, at 90 rupees, I thought one can't really lose money. Uh, then we also own this India Bulls real estate where we, okay, we've done okay. Uh, but uh, I, you know, the first thing is to own ideas in special situations where you believe in it. So KPIT, I really believe. Max Healthcare, I really believed. Where I knew that, you know, they are going to not stop. They are not a, like how Buffett called it, they are not cigar butts. We just, one puff is left, you take it and exit. It's not like that. These companies are actually good investments available at good, that are very, very throwaway valuation. So a clear yardstick is, of course, the opportunity size. And you must like it. And don't look at it as a trade. Whichever special situation you can look at yourself and say, okay, okay I, I can see myself holding this for a long period of time, even once it becomes a normal situation from a special situation. When the valuation does even catch up, I will still not sell. So Max Healthcare, for example, we've still kind of not sold completely. We still have a small position, which we think that we'll hold it and we'll see how the uh, situation evolves. So uh, some framework is that avoid the cyclicals, stick to the structural stories. And of course, wherever you think that the valuation is going to be in your favor, stick to those. And uh, as I said, you know, there are so many variations. You don't know which kind of special situation uh, may play out. Uh, so making frameworks is not very easy in a special situation. For example, you know, uh, I think in 2015 or 16, there was a demerger and a promoter change uh, in a company, Crompton, where Advent, private equity fund, bought it. And the stock went berserk. It re-rated in a big way. And, uh, you know, it was a one of the best special situations at the time, the demerger and promoter change in Crompton. Uh, I see a similar, of course, you know, I'm talking about the name which I'll talk. Of course, we own it and definitely not a buy advice. Uh, a same situation, a mirror image going on in Forbes, where AquaGuard is getting demerged. And then the same private equity fund who bought Crompton is buying AquaGuard. So they are themselves just repeating their playbook. And as investors, no one paid attention. Even though recently a lot was spoken about special situation, but still no one really paid real attention and everyone kind of missed it. Uh, so I feel once AquaGuard will list under a new management, so definitely, you know, corporate governance multiple will increase, revenues will go up, margins will go up, everything will happen. So in terms of framework, for me, what I like is a demerger is good, but when the demerger is followed with a promoter change, that is very good. Now, a demerger is good, followed by promoter change, but even in the promoter change, if a crook is going out and a great guy is coming in, then you have to go all out and make it a big position. So I'll give an example of uh, Crompton, uh, so not Crompton gives CG Power. CG Power, the outgoing promoter was, of course, you know, there were some question marks on uh, corporate governance. But the new promoter who was coming in, in my eyes, India's best promoter, Murugappa Group, where they have proven that they can run businesses and scale businesses. So when that happened in CG Power and when they went to the banks and it was happening in front of everyone's eyes at 5 rupees, 6 rupees, 7 rupees, 8 rupees, 9 rupees, 10 rupees. No one was interested. People were buying Asian paints and people were buying, you know, all kinds of the same thing going on. The same coffee can and all those things. But this stock went from practically 5 or 6 rupees to 200 rupees. So when a promoter is changing, and especially when a okay promoter is going out and a great promoter is coming in, along with the demerger, you have got to, and if you like it, of course, then you have to make it a bigger position. So it's, of course, a lot of judgment involved, but a framework can be made around these things, the variations I spoke about. And there are too many variations to, you know, 
talk about right now but you know you, you get what i'm saying right there are different different types of special situations yes yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so i uh, have to uh, summarize it see you talked about again uh, prefer structural changes versus uh, cyclical second would be uh, focus more on uh, companies that you believe in you know the story and third yeah. is of course if there is a demerger and then there is a management change and if the uh, pedigree goes up then that's a you know uh, heady cocktail now uh, one question that i had so again as you talked about there are multiple types of special situation now do you have uh, say uh, so within those categories are there certain categories that you seem uh, that uh, where you feel you know the dice is loaded in our uh, favor more often than not and are there say a special types of situation special situations where the chances of making money or rather losing money is on the higher side so any just based on your uh, experience in the past like a demerger tends to make more money demerger plus say for example management change you talked about you know is most value accretive but are there say other ones like bonus issue or rights issue where chances of making money is slightly on the lower side or buyback so if any thoughts on that you know if, if there is a category that you have in mind yeah, yeah, there's a long list of variations, as I said. There are many, 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 many different things with small, small changes. And of course, the best of the best, where the dice is loaded to fall in your favor, is demerger plus promoter change, especially if a crook is going out and a good guy is coming in. So I'll give you an example. This is a hypothetical example. Let's take, for example, a not-so-great run bank. Let's take, for example, South Indian Bank. Okay, it's an average bank. Let's say average bank. Let's say poorly, poorly kind of run bank. Now, let's take a hypothetical example. What will happen tomorrow morning if there's a press release that Aditya Puri, coming out of retirement, new chairman of South Indian Bank. No one is even going to wait to see that earnings will clear up, how it will clear up, what will happen. The bank will re-rate, shoot up, probably double, triple, over a period of, you know, a short period of time. So, promoter change, especially when average is going out and great, like I'm talking about great, great is coming in, like Murugappa is great, Aditya Puri is great, those kind of guys coming in, it can change dramatically. The dice is completely loaded in your favor. And of course, if you like the space, if you like the, for example, the banking space, and if you think Aditya Puri will re repeat what it did in HDFC, Go all out and buy it. In my opinion, of course, you must like it. Do your due diligence and everything. But uh, framework-wise, the best of the best is this. Demerger plus promoter change, especially if the bad guy is going out and a good guy is coming in. Now, where you have the least chances of making money in a demerger is when it is fairly valued, but you are buying out of FOMO of a special situation. For example, when Piramal was doing a demerger. It was very nicely valued at about 2,800. The price was announced, and due to FOMO, I think it went to 3,000 or so. And we like what? <laughs> there is nothing on the table here. I mean, there is not that you know uh, that um factor is not there. Like both the the financial services and the pharma business are pretty decently valued. They are great businesses. Okay, I agree. They are superb businesses, but very decently valued. So we said no, this doesn't make sense. And it is just announced, it will take still one, two years. What if something changes in that period? So we just avoided it. And thankfully, so it fell from 3,000 something to 2,400 now. But if Piramal goes to 2,000, then I, I think it will go straight into our portfolio. So the lowest chances of making money in a special situation is when you get in too early. And when you get in in a fairly valued company where there is not really a value unlocking going to happen, value is already there. So you want to get in where the value is going to be unlocked. So thanks. So so thank so so one question. One question. Sorry, there is a, so, so there are few uh, corporates or uh, companies that are known to basically merge or demerge companies at the drop of the hat. You have examples in pharma, you have examples in no, even in commodities. So uh, how do you uh, you know uh, take care of or how do you consider those, uh, uh, those situations do you take it case by case or you think okay maybe uh, you know it's management they are just relying way too much on uh, and I say restructuring to create value so maybe I will uh, give it a miss I don't want to name uh, companies here 
but I I hope you would some uh, companies to do that. So any thoughts on such uh, categories of uh, promoters? That particular promoter and the particular group has created a lot of value by doing a lot of these uh, like sequent came out, then uh, Solara came out. Solara came out at 200 and 30, 40, and it fell 220, 130, something like that. And from there, it shot up to 2000. Then from 2000, now it's down to 600 is a different man, uh, uh, matter, but it created the value. And special situations will keep creating value uh, till the time there is, you know, something which is actually there for the value to be. So, you know, like even. Basically, what is the idea of special situation? It doesn't matter if a promoter group is doing it often or not. That is not the point. The point is, is the value giving, is, is the market giving valuation for a particular asset inside a big, inside a big uh, conglomerate or not? And if the market is not giving valuation to a small unit un, under a conglomerate, then that special situation is going to work. For example, Strides has Stellis inside. I believe right now Stellis is available at a you know, quite a free kind of valuation. But I don't know if it will happen or not, it will not happen or whatever. So we don't own it. Uh, if it were to come near a record date or if it is actually, you know, creditors approvals have come, then, you know, I think particular. I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel Stellis is available for free over here. But we don't own it and we have no intention of owning it. I mean, so these are the risks, you know, you cannot get in too early. Yeah, Anil, yeah, Anil uh, yeah. On, on those lines, uh, since you mentioned about Piramal, that um, while the date uh, around which it was announced, it was around 3000 and if it comes to 2000 then you find value in that. So, I mean, how are you valuing uh, Piramal? Like, uh, I mean, 3000 is a bad price or 2000 is a good price. So, any thoughts on that? So, what you do simply, you know, basic things, like you, first of all, compare with the historical valuation of the same stock and on the historical level if it is on the peak valuation then you say okay fine it's unlikely that it's going to re-rate more than this and then you of course compare with the peer group and see you know if everybody is trading at this price or not so i thought when we compared the nbfc and we compared the pharma we thought there is no you know the whole point of special situation is like you need to know before buying, like if I was, you know, at 1500 rupees, for example, I would say that the NBFC is available largely for free. That kind of words should come out of your mouth. And then only you should get into a special situation. At 3000, I'm giving valuation to NBFC, I'm giving valuation to Pharma, then why a special situation? That company doesn't require the companies to break up. The value is already there on the table. Like it's value unlocking has happened. I mean, a, a splitting of those two companies at 3,000 is not going to make it go to 4,000. I, I hope I've been able to articulate properly. So there was no nothing on the table. It's just on paper that they're separating. But on paper, something separating doesn't mean the valuation has to go up. But sometimes in the market, you don't, market is not giving valuation to something. That is the time you have to do this, uh, you know, participate in a special situation because when it will list on its own, it cannot trade at zero valuation. At 1500, if the NBFC lists on its own, it cannot trade at zero. It will trade at, let's say, one and a half times book value. And then if you do the back of the uh, envelope calculation, you'll come to the conclusion that, yeah, at 1500, the stock could double. Okay. 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 Thank you. I mean, uh, just to uh, highlight, the same stock was, you know, uh, logged in lower circuit some time back, I think, on result day um, at 600 rupees or something, not long back. I yeah, mean, yeah. I don't know, price is something I, I'm not able to understand how uh, 2000 is a fair price or something like that. Also, yeah, uh, nothing, no one can tell what about, is the actual, you have to think what is in the band where you like it. Thanks. Neil, by just a follow-up question, and again, it's awesome always hearing to you uh, on the position sizing. So these, uh, you know, special situations sometimes take much longer than anticipated. It might, it might take like six months, one year, you know, like recent uh, situation of embassy itself, right? Even though some of the approvals are coming in. 
but uh, market conditions might become unfavorable. And we might have anticipated that three months, six months it will happen, but it drags to like one year, one and a half year. So in uh, such cases, how do you, you know, structure your position sizing? Do you go all in initially or you average up or you add it in different time frequency? What is your thought process in playing this, uh, these kind of special situations? Yeah, that's what I told you, Vivek Bhai. He, you, uh, Neil, Neil biggest... Vivek was not here uh, at that time. So I guess we can <laughs> once once again repeat that. And I, exactly. That's no, what no, I no, if it is already covered, uh, we can skip. That's fine. Yeah, I, just, I just said the biggest risk is to buy these special situations too early. The biggest risk of a special situation is to buy it on announcement because it gets delayed and delayed. The best time to buy is when the creditors approve. If the creditors approve, then you know in the next three to six months, it's going to go through. So, for example, GMR, I was targeting it to buy it, but I was so scared that I didn't know what is going to happen. So, But the day the creditors meeting was supposed to happen, I thought, Chalo, now it is definitely going to happen sooner than later. At 26 or 27 rupees it was, we bought it. And uh, the value unlocking started happening from that point. Perfect. Perfect. And, and still, again, at that point, also you will go all in, right? You will not like stagger your uh, position sizing, if I understand correctly. Yeah, yeah. All in in the uh, from the point of view of how much I want. If I want to take five percent in GMR, then all in five percent. Then Perfect. I will not buy three percent and two percent and one like not like that. Understood. Understood. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, this is Satish here. I have a question for you regarding the valuation uh, metric are the process what you follow for uh, evaluating new age tech companies can you help us because uh, all these new age tech companies uh, from a business point of view they all look like special situations because their uh, PE looks very high their uh, marketing expense are exorbitantly high compared to the revenue what they have been earning as of now how do you value them before you take any position for example if that is Nika or uh, Zomato or cart rate. So they have they have, they have their own flavor, but they they their core advantage is uh, using technology in their favor. So how do you handle that? Thanks. So uh, as as I said earlier in the in the discussion that when I talk about tech, almost entirely our book is filled up with traditional businesses which are transforming due to tech. Uh, we don't own a lot of these. Uh, new age tech companies we do like the out of these new age tech companies we have small positions tiny positions in zomato uh, i have a position tiny position in car trade but i have a decent sized position in nika now i really love nika for many reasons uh, i also understand it is expensive and seeing what is happening globally maybe who knows it falls some more but i think that nika is not understood very clearly by the market in general because the things that are happening in china with with video commerce and social commerce india is not even taken baby steps yet and if social commerce and video commerce kind of picks up in india things like nika in my opinion and of course take it with a pinch of salt could probably grow their revenue at let's say 30 percent for the next maybe 10 years and uh, the the difference here is to understand that they are very very profitable at the core they remain they choose not to focus on the profits you know let's put it this way unlike a paytm which is not having that core profitability nika has extreme amounts of profitability it's just that they focus on the growth and for growth, you need, need need to hire people. You need to have costs involved. So you have to front end a lot of those costs. So the profitability gets masked. But in my opinion, steady state margins for Nika are between 20 and 25%. Nika has not even begun its actual journey of what it really could be. In my opinion, the biggest revenue drivers for Nika are not this e-commerce. E-commerce is, you know, e-commerce is just the shell and of what is getting inside the the actual profitability drivers are going to be ad revenue and it's going to be 
the video commerce business when they get into it, if and when they get into it. So I just feel that I have this insight about Nika, so we just hold it. And uh, right now, the position is 3.69% in the fund. And, uh, you know, I'm indifferent. If it goes up, I'll be happy. If it fell to a very reasonable valuation, let's say if it falls 50% from here, you know, that will make it, I mean, I will actually make it a 10%, 12% kind of position in the fund. And that 10 or 12% position, I don't have to worry about for the next many years. So I look at these companies like that. I mean, I have no short-term view. I'm very indifferent. If car trade were to fall some more, I'd be okay. At a reasonable valuation, when they start trading at valuations of traditional businesses, I'm happy to increase my valuation to car trade. Zomato is one company which I don't understand as to how the profits are going to come. So we we have a tiny position, but uh, that is somewhere where I, I am a little bit scared myself. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong. But uh, in Nika especially, I think I have a lot of comfort and I don't care even if it fell 50% from here. I probably buy much more uh, on the way down. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Maybe my, my I, didn't I, didn't ask question, uh, I have one more question. Once other yeah, mods maybe, finish. Yeah, yeah, once again. Yeah, Neil, maybe I didn't uh, put across my question properly. My my question was not uh, towards any particular stock. But my yeah, I I understood the first initial uh, uh, part of your answer said that uh, you in uh, traditionally in, uh, you originally invest in uh, traditional tech companies, but my question was more towards. Is there any framework that you follow to evaluate US tech companies like this uh, uh, car trade, blah, 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 or uh, the SaaS companies or fast companies? Because they are very difficult to evaluate because the, the dynamics are too too many in those businesses. But is there any framework that you follow? Suppose if you want to buy a company like Freshworks or some other SaaS company, how do you yeah. value them? So do you compare them with the traditional uh, software services business or do you have a different framework maybe i wanted to ask that not any stock specific question sorry if i have if i have confused so you know a lot of these new age uh, companies uh, let's say the saas uh, side of uh, things where you know you have to focus on the ltv and then you have to focus on the cac and these kind of metrics give you a good sense of what the business is going to be like so if a, if a client is going to stay with the company for let's say six or eight years then you know how much to spend on growth so it becomes a little bit predictable to figure out what the growth is going to be like so these are some of the frameworks or you know some of the checkpoints that i have to look into before i get into a business and of course then uh, the growth rate and whether i really like the industry or not i mean are they doing big ticket things or slow, I mean, small ticket things? And what is the overall opportunity size? Because at the end of the day, a lot of investing depends on risk reward ratio. Like for example, when we do startup investing, I know startup investing is very, very risky. I know if I put one rupee in a startup, there's a good chance it will become zero. But I do know that is a if it does work, that one rupee may end up going to 100 rupees. So when I see that kind of risk reward, I'm more inclined to take that risk. So, and, you know, I feel that I have the insights uh, in a, in some of these companies because I've been tracking them very closely and in terms of what trends are happening globally. So something like an e-commerce is going to develop into a video commerce. I think I know it, that it is definitely going to happen. Uh, and I think I know that a lot of the, of course, I will sound arrogant and not taken in the right spirit, but I think... A lot of people in India don't understand this migration from of e-commerce to video commerce. Uh, but it's going to happen in a big way and people will get surprised with what Nike ends up achieving, for example. So that's the reason we get into these talks. It's about the vision as to what these companies may end up doing. And framework-wise, of course, you know, the checkpoints are what I said in terms of uh, what we look in the internals. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask? Can I ask? Uh, 
okay uh, at the risk of sounding uh, uh, negative uh, neil i have this uh, follow up question uh, since you mentioned about coffee can and how they were buying like you know uh, the frame work allows you to buy i was just in the spur of the moment i'm not saying bad <laughs> no again. no not not that i'm just doing you know, just listen to the question uh, you know they were buying anything at any valuation and similarly don't you think uh, the stocks like uh, the new age tech that you mentioned are also uh, similarly uh, framework but you know uh, with a different uh, thought process also okay. to right. add to it uh, if you i mean you obviously are following us markets so the new age tech stocks or the new age stocks how they are falling like nine pins there and uh, even even the stock you mentioned at the start uh, fresh works so that is also you know trading like all time low so uh, what's your take that uh, the market is getting impatient or uh, Uh, something like that maybe it can happen in india also uh, like it is happening with zomato or uh, maybe other stocks also policy bazaar and all yeah yeah so, so a lot of these stocks are falling quite a bit uh, in us and you know at the end of the day you can't you cannot blame them i mean there's nothing wrong with the businesses the businesses are doing quite good it's it's just a call on the valuation that uh, some of these stocks listed at insane Really high valuation. For example, Freshworks went to America to get that high valuation compared to what they could have got in India, and uh, things changed overnight because interest rates were uh, set to go up. So it fell. So even at this price, if you see at nineteen odd dollars, it is not super duper cheap, but it's getting there. I mean, if you if the story plays out, it'll end up creating a lot of value. So the so idea is that comparing. this new age tech companies to coffee can like right so in same way the valuation is a question mark the only difference here is that again please don't take it negatively uh, i feel and i am of course have the right to be wrong also in coffee can it's just my opinion that the best years of growth of those businesses are behind them the key difference here is while the valuation is high the best years of growth are ahead of the companies the coffee can companies may grow at 10% per year for the next 10 years or lesser than that these companies may end up growing at 30 35% for the next many years some of them are growing at 50 60 70% per year so the key difference is that while you are right that the valuation is a hazy mark but uh, which phase of the business they are in like so these new age businesses are having the best years ahead of them that's the only difference neil And if you are uh, going to pay expensive valuation then buy a company which is going to grow very fast neil, neil i just want to follow up uh, okay please go ahead uh, so you you spoken about uh, you know coffee can as a basket but i have always noticed that you've always excluded bajaj finance from uh, from that basket and you've always uh, addressed bajaj finance differently uh, you held it also a lot uh, so would you would you say that uh, even for a company like bajaj finance in your estimation the best years are behind us no i think bajaj finance uh... we are very happy with the company even now we have not sold anything but uh, it when it had fallen no it it was giving a great entry price uh, in terms of uh, valuation now again it has quickly become expensive but uh, yeah i mean it is expensive uh, but i think it will grow 25% for for a while more so i don't think the best years are behind best years are still ahead of it this reminds this reminds me this is a report that was recently written by an analyst where he gave a sell call on bajaj finance but also added that uh, there is there is like good possibility that we might be wrong on this call that like we always have been <laughs> <laughs> so uh, neil uh, you mentioned that you are very very confused like what zomato is trying to do and you also mentioned that uh, the the kiosa business is looking attractive because of the reduced cost structure due to these these uh, platform businesses like zomato and swiggy so suppose uh, in the near future i guess there might be a duopoly or a monopoly 
in in one of these right zomato or swiggy one of these might survive so do you think that then the cost to uh, this cost structure might expand because like then these platform will command whatever uh, like they they other other players will have to follow whatever the platform is asking them so that's that's a very big risk right uh, betting on the platform so uh, there are many ways to answer this uh, i feel the competition will sustain here even if one goes under somebody new will come uh, that, that is always going, like nowhere the only one person is going to be there uh, somebody will come in if somebody big goes out so right now also i think i heard somewhere one of the big conglomerates of india uh, are planning to enter food delivery so uh, so i don't i don't think that being a big risk they already charge quite a bit to the restaurants if they increase their charges any more i think they will be in a kind of a trouble so i don't see there's a risk of that happening personally of course you don't know what can happen in the future and also i think what i see is that a lot of these companies are now focusing on selling on their own websites also and uh, i'm sure devyani sapphire they are planning or you know doing their best to do takeaways on their own also so they save on the margin but they're still long way off they still depend on these guys right but right, then, but the then cost will expand uh, like like the kind of uh, we see in at dominos in what uh, when will the cost structure expand what will happen because, I mean, because they will have to like, like to maintain the entire infrastructure the fleet of people uh-huh. to deliver right. Mm-hmm. correct so i'm i'm sure they they have a plan in mind in terms of what they want to do maybe they want to do a mix of both uh, to be you know de-risked from one side or the other right so i i do know that they are planning to do this and uh, while right now is still more to do with these platforms but going forward they will have some idea as to how they want to do it and but yeah, right your right cost structure may go up a little bit nil just a follow up question and how do you see dunju uh... <laughs> dunju is a yeah you're right so i told you right uh, reliance is looking to explore this space so it, i don't think it's possible that only one person will survive here so there there's going to be a lot of competition here no 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 don't 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 you have uh, some different uh, like uh, strategy or some modus operandi different yes, so is keeping out these food delivery players yeah so means right. uh, like zomato can see it as a means uh, i don't you see uh, dunjo as threat to zomato because see zomato take around uh, 20 to 28 to 29% of the revenue share of restaurant unlike dunjo that uh, take uh, charges per delivery around 50 60 or 100 bucks so uh, don't you see more more people shifting towards or the more restaurant will also prefer towards uh, uh, delivery from dunjo or something like that so that's what i'm saying so it will never be a situation where only zomato will control the market there will always be new players uh, as a disclosure we have an investment in dunzo so we we do think that there is scope here for them to do something nice uh, so yeah you're right you're right so dunzo can be a player here my my question now sorry please okay thank you so uh, as ever insightful uh, my my query is uh, since you seem to have mastered this for india at least and your results uh, results of your pms and your small case speak for themselves uh, how many people uh, are there in your team need to uh, to do the vetting of the many opportunities that come come your way come our way and uh, uh, so how many people and how many opportunities are you looking at let's say on a monthly or a quarterly basis from which uh, what percentage do you choose uh, in your portfolio picks either in the small case or the pms that's my first question once you answer then a follow up thank you so uh, we are tracking every single thing that is happening in the special situation world to the last point from the first point uh, we have a team of 15 people and uh, we've kind of made a database where we are tracking a uh, post spin off pre spin off we are tracking potential spin offs so we we have baskets where we are tracking them like monitoring them regularly and uh, we, we i think we are covering largely the entire universe we are doing keyword based uh, you know keywords are helping us in 
tracking anything and everything that is announced daily so that is also helping so a team of 15 people uh, quite sufficient for our size right now and uh, you know we the amount of opportunities that 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 there are there we end up taking very far, few and far between like you know we end up rejecting more than what what we end up buying so so, so is it so like, like you know, 5 to 10% finally make it to your list or less than 5% yeah yeah let's let's assume 5 to 10% because we evaluate so many so i have not actually worked on the actual true number but it would be one out of 10 idea okay uh, the second thing is i don't know the context for today was it that you are announcing your us fund and uh, therefore this opportunity to speak to us and my fi- final fond hope is since we are picking so many good ideas from you and we are also refining our art i am hoping that every time you speak there should be someone else from the audience or the moderators who speak about good opportunities that you can give your opinion on and hopefully include in your portfolio thank you definitely definitely i'll be happy to do that neil uh, neil uh, yeah. neil parvez over here good to speak to you again buddy um just wanted to ask you uh, a question about one of the uh, special situations that you uh, were very bullish about which is uh, india bulls and uh, i think monday is um, india bulls real estate and monday is the uh, the the date for the nclt to come to some sort of uh, order or whatever how do you see that uh, playing out neil hi buddy good evening so so I, as i said you know i i like uh, this particular uh, special situation i think re-rating is going to happen after this merger goes through it becomes one of india's largest players available at you know cheap one of the cheaper cheapest prices in terms of peer group and corporate governance issues will be par, you know in the past so re-rating on paper should happen but i guess it will happen post not pre which is, so which is monday is monday is a big event actually yeah monday is the big event but then what happens how do you see see it playing out after that you know? i i don't think i can hazard a guess i think the market is uh, in a wild mood itself so i i do think there will be value unlocking over here that's why we own it uh, it being a cyclical we don't own too much of it but uh, i i think i think it's a it makes sense to be in our portfolio so we own it great uh, also just to uh, let you know i had sent you some information on satya industries a while ago and it's played out very well today we've got fantastic results on it so do look into that neil congratulations uh, i will i will surely do so yeah great uh one final follow up uh, neil uh, are you looking at nft crypto uh, because you say your tech and special situation uh, are you doing anything will that eventually be part of your portfolios while i am i am so i am studying the how it works and uh, i am very much interested in it i think this whole concept of the metaverse the concept of nfts i i believe these are not fads i feel these will do good going forward but uh, more from an investor's point of view like how we will benefit from investing i think there is more to do with what we can actually do to create wealth for ourselves over here like uh, for example a uh, lot of these things uh, like we can make our own nfts today so if i want i can go and mint my first tweet and make an nft out of it and sell it somewhere so i think there is money to be made for someone who can think differently so nfts have to be taken seriously so is the metaverse uh, is still early days but i think uh, there has to be a different thought process here so on the investing front i think some of these uh, content creators like uh, saregama and tips they will have a new stream of earnings from nfts they are going to be able to mint a few of these songs for example let's say they collaborate 
with some singer and they make only one copy of one pretty good song they are going to be able to sell it at a pretty cool price or something from their catalog let's say if i want to be the owner of some great singer song today what if these guys are able to make an nft out of that and say neil there's only one copy from today and it belongs to you i may be willing to pay a great price for something like that like let's say a mohammad rafi song or a lata mangeshkar song where one of their song i am the whole and soul only i can listen to this song and spot no one else so i think these guys are going to have a big future in nfts they themselves don't know it and not do they understand it yet because this whole space is developing itself right now but as investors we need to study it and keep track of it like you know for example uh, right now in america in the us there is a nft of a house whereby the house deed is not involved but the company which owns the house there's a nft being made of the company so you don't have to go through the process of registering the house in your name this that you know the house deed has been replaced by the nft so how does this change the real estate market where you know you can just you the way you order things on zomato you want to order a coffee on zomato you can go on this platform and buy a house just like that but without the need of going through all these crazy paperwork and all these things just go and buy the nft of the company that owns the property rights so it's amazing what is happening in the world and we need to actually pay attention over here what we have an advantage is that we are curious learners all of us we all like you know sitting here talking about it you are not shunning it off and i feel the edge is over here the edge is that if you go on twitter you see a lot of people are mocking each other the the biggest joy a lot of people are getting is when some of these tech companies are falling their lives motive right now is to laugh at others when somebody else is you know probably suffering some loss or you know somebody is buying something tech company and the tech company falls they laugh but they need to go and figure out can they actually benefit that's value creation so we need to actually focus on how can we create value for ourselves as investors and also you know as sellers of potential nfts you know uh, if tomorrow if today you have 50000 followers on twitter you make your mint your first nft and just keep it with yourself and let's see what you end up becoming in the future and maybe you want to sell it you may end up making a thousand dollars just like that so th- these are pretty cool times and i think we need to learn a little bit more you know there are there is a guy uh, a, a student who wanted to go from france he wanted to go to silicon valley to begin a career but he was very very poor and he didn't know how to how how do i go from france to silicon valley so what he did he tokenized himself he actually the kid tokenized himself and he sold tokens of himself so 35% of his earnings for life go to the token buyers so these are cool times things which you never heard of in the past a ipo of a human being basically that was an ipo of a human being so can we figure out something like this like you know today if you have a great investment opportunity but you don't have money what do you do can you go and actually tokenize yourself raise money like that i mean i feel this is a time like none other for people who are actually in the process of learning and let's not be in this mocking phase let the tech stocks fall here yeah. what do we have to do can we learn and do something in the rebound period where which kind of these tech companies are going to really come back with a bang and go up like 20x 50x from here so i think it's that kind of period right now we need to learn thank you neil thank you neil neil just one, just one question from my side uh, you you spoke about you know how how the change of promoter in, in cc power was value additive so you know like, i'm trying to draw a parallel out of it uh, see a case like dish tv um, where where the lenders are you know trying to initiate a change in promoter right but of course there are there are some procedural issues around it so so how do you how do you try to time that 
you know what are what are the signals that you look for you know in terms of say board meetings or in terms of say you know other other signals that you can expect so it's a simple answer right uh, the you have to be swimming with the tide even in the special situation for example like let's go back to the, our hypothetical example aditya puri coming in can change the fortunes of south indian bank definitely he'll do it 9 out of 10 times definitely he'll make it a great bank but can a aditya puri kind of guy go to dish tv and do anything there a lot of things are out of his control right so i don't think a promoter change may make such a big impact in a in a sector like or in a space or in a company like dish tv just my opinion of course i could be wrong but uh, you need to have low hanging fruit where you know that this guy will come and just based on this guy coming first of all bank will get re-rated and secondly the earnings are almost 9 out of 10 times or certain is going to go up but i don't think the same can happen in dish tv it's a, it's a very difficult space very very difficult space no no sure oh, sure, sure but just just assuming like you know um, removing the industry from uh, from the consideration say it, it kind of currently trades the multiple that are trades currently is is under 50 or a 75% discount to its peers right uh, so just from that sense so one thing is of course i agree i mean i mean it could be dish tv it could be any hypothetical company here but but you know just in terms of you know do you just wanted to check do you track these cases and of course we have seen we've seen we've seen few of multiple of them in the last year where kind of lenders are trying to uh, you know initiate a change uh, in in promoter due to the pledge shares that they currently own so how what are the signals that you look for it it could not be dish tv but can be can be other companies as well or some so situation as i said earlier this is a big big trigger to buy stocks but the whole point is you need to like the underlying asset and you need to know that the guy coming in is going to change it definitely going to change it it needs to be as simple as you know me leaving the bat and virat kohli picking up the bat he is definitely going to score more runs than me it needs to be like that so if you can stay with a high degree of confidence that yes this guy is going to come and take over the reins from that guy who is not so good and nine times out of 10 if can you say put your neck out and say ki yes this guy is going to turn the change the fortune then definitely you should buy it i don't let's forget this tv as the example but as i said earlier right d merger plus promoter change is the best special situation there is especially if d merger plus promoter but a crook going out and a great guy coming in that's the best of the best understand hello neil do you see any means special situation arising in case of the g entertainment limited which is going to merge with the sony yeah that is a that is a proper special situation that merger uh, it will create a lot of consolidation it will give them pricing power so yeah definitely i i do think so but wo hoga ke nahi hoga kaise hoga what timeline right, so question marks are there but i do think uh, if the markets fell there are some of these stocks if they all like some of these stocks if they fell 20% for example from here like piramal yes. fell 20% or if bajaj electricals fell 20% or if niit fell 20 25% some of them become no brainers So, any idea how the Invesco will behave in that? As I said, no, I don't have the idea. So that's the risk. So we need to wait closer to the record date in this case. And that no, promoter side, as 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 the Punit Goenka actually, Invesco intention is the they want the they want to throw out the Punit Goenka. Yeah. So let's not comment too much because this is a very evolving situation. So I don't want to comment on. but yeah it is very interesting is all i can say and we are tracking it quite closely we don't own it but we are tracking i think if something concrete happens here one way or the other it becomes a play hello yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone uh, anyone else any question Hi Neil, this is Shini Masan here. Um, I have a different kind of a question. Um, see, uh, you uh, there is a lot there of is a lot of things about small case being 
you know a cheap mutual fund but uh, it's more of a comparison with pms but uh, since you do both right do you see a major difference in the uh, the risk behavior or the investment behavior of your pms investors versus small case investors there are different types of investors both of them small case is largely we are dealing with retail investors uh and pms is of course much more savvy investors who have you know multiple pmss their portfolios are very very big so they know that you know markets ups and downs what can you like you know you have to but so it's a different mindset firstly so it's a different way of dealing with both sets of uh, people so yeah definitely i mean they come small case comes with a lot of challenges i feel but uh, it's a it will be a great satisfaction if someone can actually provide a good product to retail investors and help them get out of this trap of trading get out of this trap of you know taking tips and all from other people and just focus and do sip that's it so i think small case is actually serving a good purpose here uh, okay uh, okay so then can, can i can i you uh, you think to say that you know hopefully the small case investors will have the discipline and uh, you know grow grow enough wealth to become pms investors that that is the point that is what we are aiming to do we want a lot of our small case investors over time to be able to come over to the pms generate that kind of wealth over the years and then come over to the pms otherwise uh, you know that that is the main kind of criteria that that the reason we started with the small case we want to do a good job for everyone but of course at the end of the day we are looking at it's like a backward integration and forward integration So I guess uh, if there are no further questions, I think we can call it a night over here. Uh, we generally, uh, we, generally do have, we generally do have uh, some brief moments of silence, and then someone comes <laughs> up with a very good question. So that's a very normal feature of our clubhouse rooms. No problem. No problem. But I guess uh, uh, it's it's been like almost uh, two hours uh, since we started this session. So um, we can we can perhaps take the uh, last few questions if anybody has, or if not, then we can. Oh. I guess next time I'll love to join this panel and ask questions. I think asking questions is a lot of fun. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Neil. Uh, you, I heard you some time back that you are aspiring to launch a US uh, uh, focused small cap. So, could you just uh, speak about a little bit about it and with, with what kind of companies you are looking to invest in US? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, when I started out with the PMS, I had a clear focus uh, or a target in mind that let's be the most innovative people over here. in this financial services space because i think this entire financial services space most of the legacy people are sleeping uh, they are not getting the big idea and emerging areas so we did the pms with a different thought process that we do special situations and technology now we are launching an american basically a us is not a small case small case is a brand so i will not say small case it's kind of a small case for american equities we are launching that as early as next week which will help normal investors to start building american portfolios we are going to be focusing on the tech side like uh, esports gaming saas technology like everything on, on the internet kind of side and uh, we are also up and running with our startup platform so we want to do these three things for the time being and we want to become uh, you know a one stop destination where you want to do pms great you want to invest in startups great you want to do american investing great everything you can get in one place currently what is happening is that you can invest in america on your own all you have to do go and do open an account on vested or on interactive brokers but what do you buy uh, like a lot of people who are not full time investors for example they have difficulty figuring out in india what to buy now going to america how do you do the research what it, so if someone can make an etf kind of a basket we will just go and subscribe to the basket let's say you want to put 100 dollars and do an sip so we are making a product like that an sip product go and invest in the entire basket knowing that somebody who understands the space 
who are looking at the US market is also like created a done a research and made a basket over there where you can go and look at it if you like it you can subscribe to it kind of like a small case for american stocks so we are launching that shortly we'll announce it soon but neil uh, uh, if you invest in the in the us through the fund does it make sense uh, with the tax uh, implications and also the exchange rate etc does it still work out to be feasible as a pro- or profit so the tax rate is 20% but it comes with indexation benefit so let's say you hold it for 2 years or 3 years so it keeps reducing net on a net level the tax rate keeps reducing that is first and secondly in terms of the exchange rate you rightly said while going you have to pay something like a 1% uh, you make a loss of 1% on the exchange uh, rate but over a long run if you keep money for 10 years in america uh, you get a diversification in the currency also and i feel that is a little bit important considering all the geopolitical issues around us uh, some part of our wealth even if it is 5% of our wealth if it's in Amer- invest in the us stocks you have some dollar assets over there so tomorrow if something adverse happens here you have something there so i think the rupee will keep depreciating over the years and you know the dollar is you need to have some exposure in my opinion no are you saying are you saying you that uh, it will be a dollar account uh, which can be accessed uh, in dollars uh, also yes, of course it's an lrs so, so we are partnering with vested vested is the broker so it's an lrs uh, thing the rbi has officially announced that indians can invest 250000 dollars per year in america or in global equities basically so we have tied up with vested we have made a a vest they call it a vest they don't call it small case they call it a vest so we have basically made a basket of stocks you can just go and you will see over the nigen capitals basket you can just click on it it will ask you how much you want to invest if you put 50 dollars 100 dollars it will just buy that that much worth of shares in your account so neil i i happen to be an american citizen uh, holding a us passport so now if i had to invest also i could just do it through your fund or do, would it not work so there is no fund like, there is no fund this is a research product where you will have to sign up as a broking client with vested who is our partner in this case and right. once you sign up with vested there are all these baskets that they have made and so ours is one basket where we have done the research now you can just go there and buy how much ever you want to buy and regularly keep buying doing sip okay cool it's very simple it's is practically a completely digital product register on vested go and subscribe to the basket that's it as simple as that and when you realign the portfolio is that done by a press of a button or or yeah so when we realign the portfolio there you get an update that these guys have realigned the portfolio so it will not realign in your account automatically it will ask a permission that these guys have realigned they are selling two of these stocks and they are buying two of those stocks so you have to say yes i agree to do this because this is not a fund right i am not having the authority to do anything in your port i am just managing a research product over here and you have to give the final approval once you give the final approval automatically the changes will be done Super. Sounds very really good. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, Neil. Uh, Sanjay. Uh, I'm. I've been following you and the special situations and Nijan, and I'm a part of the thing. So I'm very excited about uh, India Bulls uh, as well as the GMR situation. Great results in GMR. I had a few questions to for you. One is, you know, because we're also into tech and Saregama is such a huge thing. What do you see? You know, the reason for the the huge drop in in saregama at the moment and part 2 have you you know because we are talking of ott and music and tv and production stuff have you looked at mukta arts you know they've got schools they've got college they've got land bank and they've got production ott and a huge library thanks so no um, i have not looked at mukta arts much in detail uh and coming to saregama i think it's a illiquid kind of stock right and i think a big player had been exiting i don't think that big player has completely exited uh okay there could be some more selling from the big party okay. but if the price comes down yeah. uh, good time for us to buy 
I mean, I cannot comment for others, but no, no. I think we will buy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm part of the opportunities fund, so I will buy. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, correct, correct, yeah. So yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and about and, the sorry, investing sorry. in the US means uh, what is the minimum amount? Is there any restriction? Means minimum size? What happens is the US brokers they allow you to buy fractional shares. Unlike India, where you can't buy fractional shares, U.S. Right. brokers allow you to buy fractional shares. So you can even put fifty dollars, and a great fifteen twenty stock portfolio you can buy with only fifty dollars. Where you will get fractional holdings. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Hello, Neil. Uh, this is Anand here. I have a few questions. First one, I just um, about your. PMS offering. So, what is the minimum ticket size for that? So, uh, as per the SEBI rules, uh, the minimum investment amount for PMS is fifty lakh rupees. And uh, this is done directly through you, or how how would that work? Yeah, yeah. PMS is a discretionary product where you have to do KYC with our PMS, and once your account is open, uh, our DMAT partner is HDFC. So, once your DMAT account is open with HDFC. You do the transfer of the funds, and then we manage your portfolio end to end. Okay, so is your offering on HDFC? If I am already a HDFC security account holder, it's already there. No, HDFC security is different. HDFC under the PMS umbrella is different. Okay, HDFC AMC, uh, you are under them. Yeah, yeah, yes. No, we are under HDFC Bank. Bank. They are okay. handling the PMS. Okay, my uh, second question is with regard to the offering. um you mentioned in the us market i mean you you said uh, we can invest in your basket of stocks through vested yes so what what is the benefit to you as a company because we are buying the stock we pay the brokerage to the vested so is there a revenue share between you so it's not a revenue share we charge a subscription fee directly to the investor So before you buy the basket, you will have to pay a subscription fee that we set up. So I think uh, for the time being, we've set up for twelve thousand rupees annually. It's a very, you know, it's not an expensive price. Correct. And uh, so uh, I mean, you can do anything. It's it's just twelve thousand flat for it, irrespective of how many ins and outs of the money. You want to invest a hundred dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. For you, the price is twelve thousand rupees INR. And what kind of management do you do to the portfolio? So, say I have invested um, into a basket of this. Do you do the, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, the rounding up or, uh, you know, that uh, reallocation and all based yeah, on your rebalance? Yeah, of course. Rebalancing, yeah. Handle the rebalances uh, as and when they are required. So that will done. The be done across the portfolio. No, no, no. So exactly. So when we do the rebalance in the model portfolio, all the unit, all the portfolio holders, the basket holders, will get an alert via the app and also via email that these guys have changed the model portfolio. Would you like to approve the changes or not? If you say that no, I don't want to sell Apple. I love Apple. I just want to hold it. Then you click no. But if you think that yes, I'll just follow what these guys are doing, then click yes. And then automatically, whatever changes we have made in the model portfolio will happen in your portfolio. Okay, but typically rebalancing and re reinvesting and all that happens only maybe six months. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are pure investors. We don't do trading. So our idea is to buy companies where we have visibility of few years and do SIP. Simple as that. They don't want to complicate things with trading and speculation. So we uh, have one or two rebalances in the year. Yeah, so that, that's typically what is done in most uh, model portfolios. So in that in that case, um, the, we are basically looking at a, a long term, uh, you know, benefit, right, for this. So is there any kind of uh, returns that you are indicating or uh, providing for these kind of your portfolio? Mm -hmm. I mean, so we have to. So we are SEBI registered people, so we have to be very careful. And we, I mean, it's not allowed for us to give any kind of guidance on returns. No, but for the US thing, I'm talking about the US one. Yeah, yeah. Even for them, I mean, 
we in india like being a fund manager i'm selling to indian customers right so i can't provide any kind of guidance on what returns can come i will hope to do the best job that there is like in terms of our pms our cagr right now is 38.65% for the last 3 plus years so i would hope to do the best i can but i can't give a number yeah. okay yeah and last question is with regard to sorry uh, just one more question i think i messaged you on the back channel you're talking about demergers and all that uh, the recent uh, there was a demerger of uh, mothers and sumi if you remember yeah, yeah. and yes, then the right. stock fell so do you have any any anything any any thoughts on that i i in fact i don't think the stock has fallen it's been pretty resilient in this entire carnage where big big companies have fallen 15 20 30% 30%. mothers and sumi demerged at 180 and is still at 180 so it it's actually held its own but although we don't own it but uh, it could get interesting if it fell a little bit So a lot but of these, it's, the result came out today and it is not very good so do you think that is because i mean quarter on quarter result is good but year on year result is not returns are not there because it you cannot compare no uh, the big part of the business is now they will report separate balance sheet so year on year you can't compare i mean of course year on year will look very bad because a big part of the business is out it will report separately so we can't even check probably quarter on quarter Okay, okay. Need you were tracking this demerger, Madarasan demerger. Thank you, thank you for that. Happy to happy to answer, buddy. Yeah, yes, I am tracking uh, Madarasan. We don't own, but we are tracking. I am so, more interested uh, in the other part, which is yet to list. Yeah, so I was coming to that. So, do you think the that institutional selling that you keep talking about, uh, because the resulting entity size would be very Not less. So we'll we'll see the selling in the initial days for that in entity. No, you are likely to see selling in this entity, which is listed. Acha, okay, all right. That entity because, was a sought after entity. Whoever wants it wants that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but but you talked about the regulatory uh, reason, right? For for that reason, uh, the funds might sell. They might, but there will also be a lot of buyers. Yeah, yeah. So buyers would be. Uh, Like people so, like us, I mean, I'm telling you, we will be looking at it if the right price is there. I hope it sells off, but I don't. I don't think it will. Right, right. Thanks a lot. So you yeah, you keep we, talking about opportunity SIP as well. So could you like elaborate on that? Like suppose uh, we 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 talk a lot lot in this room about ki how uh, indexing is a like a really good strategy for most investors. Perhaps say eighty eighty ninety percent of investors. So like what would be uh, and you talk and you say ki a opportunity sip is even better way to like uh, outperform the index right so what how how should a person go about following this so opportunity sip we thought about one fine day out of the blue i don't know how we came up with the idea it's basically pyramiding so it's like momentum on the upside pyramiding on the upside and also on the downside so any time a portfolio comes off by let's say 5% whether it is gone up 100% and even from 100% it comes down 5% you buy and or else if it's you bought at uh, at a price and from that price it falls 20 uh, like 5% you buy so at every 5 to 7% or you, you you can make your own range for me it's like 5 to 7% at every 5 to 7% range we deploy money whether it is on the upside or on the downside and what i realized is that this is a pretty good strategy i mean it helps you so you know many a times it's not only beneficial to add when the stocks fall it's also pretty beneficial to add when the stocks rise for example today when we did sip we bought everything so you know even the losers got added like faircam fell so we ended up adding some faircam but we also ended up adding some uh, sapphire so you add winners also you add losers also so you get spread so another thing that we do in the sip bit is that we don't just buy one company we put money in the entire portfolio right thank you right, thank you another question for you uh, so he is faircam is one of his biggest holding so he had a question like uh, you today it saw a very sharp fall what's what's your view on on, on the company no i'm i'm i didn't not think that it the result warranted such a high fall 
we are in an inflationary environment here i mean it's a, there is a lot of raw material inflation and uh, chemical space not many people understand in the first place which chemicals price is going how you know like for example i'm just telling you on the whole so thoda bahut margins upar niche hoga anyways the chemical space specialty chemicals or normal chemical space is very volatile on margin front and in this situation it's even more volatile so doesn't matter this kind of result was okay it didn't warrant a 20% fall in my opinion so we bought a little bit but i mean if it fell fall some more we'll we'll see if we want to add some more or not but we'll even so whenever we add we look to add at a entire portfolio level so one key learning is not to just if fair chem is fallen 20% i'm just going to put money in fair chem that will not work you will have to put money in the winners also along with the losers so the entire portfolio must be put some put some money in the portfolio whatever is the fair chem allocation that much money will go in fair chem whatever is the allocation of sapphire will go to sapphire so you know you maintain those weights makes sense makes sense thanks a lot neil sorry neil, one more thing uh, uh, in the recent budget the government has come out the, regarding the investing in the us and uh, means uh, how it works means you say that you can invest in that no us us market but uh, in this budget the government has come came something about that uh, investing in that no us so actually it is not clear to me so what happened is on the mutual fund side uh parak parek and all and lot of etfs like the nasdaq 100 etf they passed some uh you know limits beyond the point you can't invest more so that limit was triggered so they were not allowed to sell any further uh units so that was happening in inr right that is happening under the denomination of inr rupees you are putting money in parag parag mutual fund for example and they are putting money in us so, so that is suddenly taken a road block what i am talking about is under the rbi allowed lrs which is basically you convert your rupees into dollars first and invest in dollars so that is very much allowed and i mean after this mutual fund embargo i think the lrs scheme is going to get a big push going forward yeah neela this is a short can i add a couple of points i just want to mention uh, i think you mentioned you said it briefly but i thought i'll put it explicitly sure right yeah so um, you know i think there is a question about vested i think you kind of mentioned it is like small case but it probably might be useful to just tell people that it is almost like a small case i i felt that the vests of vested are very similar right and they are the non discretionary pms and uh, another thing that people talk about you know how much money uh, would they put in uh, i just want to mention that unless you choose a particular bank um, most of the uh, you know if you invest using the lrs right there is a lot of transaction costs so it wouldn't make sense to you know invest small amounts or invest very frequently right so you should do it uh, you know once in a while maybe once a month is okay but it should be a larger amount i think uh, neil was mentioning that i thought i'll just make it explicit and again i just give a disclaimer that uh, even though some of us may be registered as savvy nothing that i say at least should be taken as uh, investment advice <laughs> but it's just a suggestion right similarly neil also very clear right and uh, i definitely want to mention one thing amplify one thing that neil uh, talked about uh, i'm sorry i'm taking that liberty neil is that uh, you know anybody registered with savvy he made that point right he is registered with savvy he should not give you a, a return indication or whatever right so if you are investing in equity if you are investing in a market product sebi expects you to have done the due diligence and if you ask questions definitely the intermediary uh, you know could give you an answer but nobody can give you uh, even an indicative return right and a person who talks about the product but doesn't talk about the indicated return actually it shows that they are abiding by the rules and uh, you should probably trust them more <laughs> i'm mean, just making this unsolicited statement right so you wouldn't find a, a, a you know a compliant semi intermediary semi intermediary giving you any kind of a guaranteed return or any such thing if you see such products it is probably an indication that they does not 
it may not pass uh, pass the beast master thank you that will just share that thank you neil i have neil i have one final question uh, as i understand that you also provide a curated list of startups to hni clients so could you please share some of the learnings you have drawn from that curated list for the last couple of years some interesting companies which have come under your uh, watch list or the trends if you can talk about and plus the valuation thank you so uh, you know we wanted to be unique you know as i said earlier on that when you do something you should do which nobody else is doing and only then you can win then you have a right to win if you do a good service after that then you have a right to win when you are the only guy doing it <clears throat> so we wanted to do the startup platform we realized that startups are not accessible to normal investors like startups require a check of let's say 10 crores now normal investors will not put 10 crores in a startup it's risky anyway so we thought why not create a syndicate kind of structure and make something which is currently not available make it available so we we have a category 1 aif which is called an angel fund and uh, whenever anybody becomes our pms clients right now they get access to uh, this separate service also this aif so whenever on our platform <coughs> sorry whenever on our platform if a startup opportunity comes we kind of give the details to our investors and they can decide whether they want to invest or not now in terms of learnings there are lots of learnings there are um, as investors you know we never stop learning and we never stop making mistakes so you know we spoke about vested vested was a company which i came till the 11th hour and said okay no forget it let me not invest because i went and took advice of some brokers so i i you know took some background and asked some people that you know what do you think about this idea i asked a couple of broker friends and they were completely dismissive like why 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 will vested win you know why hdfc or zero the may started some day and they can completely wipe out vested and i thought okay yeah you know maybe you are right but i didn't trust my own instinct had i invested in West, uh, vested when it came for seed funding i would have made probably 50x already so idea is to invest in those kind of vision that you think the business world needs i knew it that i want to invest in america but i don't know how to invest in america when vested came with the idea i knew that i should go they are the first mover but listening to these people so the first and the biggest learning stop listening to people jo bhi ho even if it is rakit junjun wala saying don't do something you screw him you decide whether you it's right for you or not like because i have a actual example here you know in 2000 i don't know exact year maybe it was 13 or so i wanted to buy bitcoin honestly i wanted to buy bitcoin and that time warren buffett publicly and charlie munger publicly this is all rubbish gambling speculation is all is going to all crash and burn and i thought okay yaar if these guys are saying that must be true i mean they are the lords of finance and we should not second guess them so i said okay forget bitcoin let's not buy bitcoin so i invested in market of course i did good there but i ended up missing out on the journey of a lifetime by missing out on bitcoin at that price so don't the biggest learning is don't listen to anyone listen to yourself and after that even if you're wrong it's on you but uh, so that is one and secondly startups work right they are very risky but if they work even one startup doing good in your portfolio can make sure you get a very good satisfying return so the learning is go for startups which are not burning money number one rule so we have done five startup deals on our platform the idea is go for the guys who are not burning money who are self sustainable and startups do a trick normally before a fundraise they spike up the marketing spend so they anyways ask a revenue multiple right they have no profits they ask revenue multiple so they spike up the percentage of marketing to revenue so look at that metric if a company if a startup is growing revenue from 100 rupees to 200 rupees but they last year spent on marketing let's say 20 rupees and suddenly this year they spent 40 rupees that guy is trying to con you 
and is likely that guy is going to crash and burn along with you so we look at this metric the amount they spend on marketing last year compared to this year and if the amount is same in terms of percentage and still the revenue growth has gone up exponentially we we love that kind of situation so the incidentally the first startup we invested last year was a company called ans commerce it's basically like the shopify of india they are helping companies to outsource their e-commerce and flipkart just recently uh, like they not that the media reports said that flipkart is in talks to acquire so our we may get our first exit already so it's a pretty exciting time and like what like, sort of uh, ticket size do you do for these kind of uh, startups typically our syndicate will invest between half a million dollars to let's say 2 million dollars but we break it up to something like a 5 lakhs per customer 5 to 10 good. lakhs per client mm-hmm, mm-hmm. F- few follow up questions sorry for going okay a few follow up questions neil if i may on this startup piece um so so the way you talked about is i mean how is it differentiated if at all let's say from a mumbai angels or uh, any kind of uh, syndicate that uh, that is being run in india or do you kind of provide um, further help to these startups to grow in terms of making connections or helping them grow groom them uh, bring in other partners or run sort of an accelerator with them or is it like more of a spray and pray approach um so that's one and two as you said you are raising uh, as a syndicate you do about half a million to 2 million and you um, you do only in uh, seed or is that uh, going up to series a b uh, and the follow on growth capital as well uh, once you answer them probably i may have few more questions so the first question is there are a lot of people doing it right venture catalyst mumbai angels ipv hey angel there are some seven eight maybe angel list also the key difference is that they are investment bankers and we are actual investors investor banker investment bankers job is to sell they have no investing experience they have no vision so we are the only guys who are actual investors who is doing this so we have a actual edge on these guys secondly we bring a curated list of startups startups where i am personally putting money if you go on the mumbai angels platform or venture catalyst platform in a year they will bombard you with something like 100 to 1000 startup ideas now whether you'll do your business work invest in markets do us markets or look at those 1000 startups it is not possible to study those 1000 startups so we are not investment banker shoving down deals down your throat we are going to be bringing let's say in a year maybe 12 to 15 deals all those 12 to 15 deals i will personally be investing also so you as a client know that okay fine neil is also putting money the due diligence all those things so you have to decide then on the overall kind of thing whether do you like this vision or not do you like this particular thing in e sport this company is doing good so i'll explain to you in a way that an investor will explain a follow a following investor and not like a seller of a product not a salesman i'll be doing it a actual proper honest product of course you have to take final call whether you want to invest or not but idea is that we are investors who understand investing and they are sellers and their job is to is to sell it to you so that's the big difference between all these platforms and us our job is to basically source deals from all these platforms and figure out which are the best ones and whether it is i'm investing i give the co investment opportunities to my investors of course Understood. then the investor has to decide if they want to invest or not but i will bring it to on the table understood uh, so, so yeah your so second question was um so so second was was i mean uh, how how do you kind of help these companies out so let's say you you invested right uh, Whoever. I got uh, it. Right. So I think the second question was also on the uh, what stage we invest. So we don't invest one in is, the. So, so, sorry, Neil. One is one is the stage which is which is a very vanilla, but uh, but maybe maybe more than that. So how do you how do you help these guys groom? 
because and and kind of do you provide accelerator support connections unlocking doors how do you kind of help them really uh, because i mean uh, to to get any start up from where they are to where your vision is you they they anyone would kind of need support and are you leading those rounds or do you kind of get get other people as well to kind of lead those rounds and then i have a couple more questions if i may uh, just exploring this further with you so the first four deals that we did we were part of the round we were a small part of a large round the last deal that we did we invested in a coffee company uh, the deal is not yet announced so i can't name it uh this coffee company we are the lead, lead investor so we are putting in 2 million dollars and uh, we are the lead investor this will be announced shortly so here we are going to work closely with the company we are, we are picking up a 5% stake our our aif is picking up a 5% stake so we'll be working closely and uh, we understand the starbucks model and we want to kind of guide these guys and we understand qsr in a big way and we did the analysis of what we did in devyani we did the analysis in this particular company and i came to the conclusion that the store level unit, unit economics is better than devyani international also and these guys don't have to pay any kind of royalty to the to the main brand like what these guys pay royalty so we have insights right of investors of capital market so we'll obviously be guiding them as to how to present their books before they do the next round of funding so of course we bring a lot of things to the table and uh, you know our clients include some of the biggest family offices some of the biggest ceos so if they need to do any kind of collaboration we'll help them in anything that they need particular this company got it got it got it so, um, yeah so yeah so sorry am i going so so following up on that you talked about i mean helping them and uh, and and kind of um, i mean helping them groom and and going ahead uh, with them to kind of realize the vision so to say um uh, so so if somebody wants to come in into this syndicate uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean is your fee structure 220 or i mean uh, or or is there a some some other way do uh, do, uh, do people have right of refusals uh, negotiable uh, could you kind of throw some light i know it's a it's a bit of a a blank page but it will be good to good to see if you have some some uh, ideas around this yeah so uh, guys uh, one just last thing let's keep this the last question because tomorrow morning i have a pms ai world uh, webinar where i need to be doing a morning session so um, what we do in the fee structure we don't charge anything up front that again a big difference between the other than us we don't do this 2% right uh, we do a 15% flat profit share so if whatever on exit let's say 100 rupees became 200 rupees then on the 100 rupee profit we'll charge a 15% cut that's it nothing else so it's only on a performance based we don't charge the annual fee i don't believe in that understood and how, how can somebody be a part of this so currently it is only uh, available for our pms uh, customers uh, our actual clients but uh, we are very shortly going to make it available for everyone where you can actually do kyc with the aif and the deal will come in the aif and you can decide whether you want to invest or not got it look got forward it. to look forward to yeah so we will we'll put all these details about the american product the 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 aif once it's ready for everyone and then whoever wants to get in touch with me can actually just email me my website is nijanpms.com uh, just directly email me from there or send me a message on twitter or something and we can talk about anything that you feel like right now i just need to go guys it was great talking to you guys and i hope right, 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 right. i've been able to add value to you guys i hope i'm not like bored you <laughs> on a weekend so and nice thank you thank you very helpful thank you i really enjoyed it mobli take care see thank you, you yeah. thank you you take care have a good night bye bye thanks neil uh, guys if you want to access the highlights to this session they are posted in the link above uh, within 30 minutes from now i will also be posting the recording of this session so that you can access it can you also send me uh, the recording of the session if you can the email can, 
Uh, Neil, was that you asking? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll ask Utkarsh. Uh, Utkarsh will have access to the recording. So, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll send it we'll, to you we'll, as well. We'll send it, we'll send it, uh, Neil. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot, Neil, for coming by. Uh, it was like really nice having you here. Lots of new, new things we learned today. And we hope to host you.